I haven't. I've had way more FOMO sitting at my desk than I do living this lifestyle. Because right yeah. now I'm like, yeah, I'm doing everything that I want to do. Everyone else is missing out on my life. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea this world was even out here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Awesome. I had no clue. <laughs> it's so cool that you, and you learn it all on, like, you wouldn't be able to research all of it. It's just stuff that you learn, I yeah. feel like, along yeah. along the way, too. Yep. It's totally. like homebrewing. Sometimes you just got to rig shit up. <laughs> 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 and you make it work. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome to Stout Conversations, where every week we sit down with creative thinkers in the craft beer industry and beyond. Your hosts, Ken and April, live and work in a 24-foot RV, traveling the country in search of great stories around a great beer. Cielito lindo, however you want to translate it, lovely sweet one, or beautiful sky. Both hold true for this quaint camping spot just south of Ensenada and Baja. With margaritas to put you on your ass, expats to keep you rolling in laughter, palm trees swaying in the ocean breeze, and Lizzie and Thomas to inspire you to move into a van, harvest hemp, hike the Grand Canyon, and surf Faja, there's no doubt about it. If you ever thought you couldn't do something, these two, along with Umphrey, their pup, and Karini, the van, will send you into van life faster than you can quit your job. All right, should we make this official? Official? <laughs> okay. Official, official. Cielito lindo, right? In Baja, California, Mexico. Yay. You two are the, sp the Spanish No, she's speaking. <laughs> <laughs> we're with I Thomas think we're and both Lizzie. about trying. <laughs> <laughs> Which, what we I know I am. <laughs> yeah. You're trying, though. You're taking lessons. I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm working yeah. on it. And I think, um, so we met last night over some very strong margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> How were you feeling last night? I was, I just went and watched a movie and went straight to bed. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had those two margaritas and I was done for. <laughs> yeah, because those two margaritas when I first got yeah. here, it was like, okay. No, it was just a glass of tequila. <laughs> Pretty much. I overlander was very correct. Yeah. <laughs> People said margaritas here were good. Yeah. <laughs> and they are. They're very good. <laughs> So you guys don't um, brew beer like most of the people that we interview. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. But you are on an adventure, and I think we'll, it, we'll define it later, but we, you're living what we call a stout life. So we loved your story, and we wanted to put it on camera and show everybody. So yeah. now you have to kind of tell us what your story is and why we're so enthralled with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we live in our sprinter van that um, we converted. Our Name's Karini. Um, and the name come from? Um, it's actually yeah. a fish song. Um, we're really okay. big oh, fish okay. fans. And there's a song called Fish, and um, or there's a song called Karini, and she has like a the bumper is busted in. It's like been busted in since we bought it. And the line in Karini is Karini had had a lumpy head. So <laughs> that's why we named our band Karini because she has a lumpy head. Um, so if you're fish fans, are you? I'm not a big fish follower. So are you fish heads? Are you called fish heads? Uh, so I feel like some people would call us that. Some people Kinda would just like call us heads. Yeah. Uh, weird, dirty hippies. <laughs> <laughs> um, Your modern day hippies. Yeah. 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 But aren't you even making sure that you head back to Denver in time to see? Yeah, we'll definitely yeah. make sure we're back in Denver see? for Yeah, that's what we did. Next next yeah. uh, well, so it was every Labor Day. Yeah. Every Labor Day. So we okay, did that this summer. So we've been living in the, we, we bought our van um, like Memorial Day weekend of 2000. 18. 18 and okay. um so and then we spent we had been you know planning for like about a year or so that we wanted to do some long-term travel and we have a dog so um I'm free. Yeah, I'm free. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that kind of limits what we can do from like a travel perspective. Like we couldn't, you know, we had friends who did like Southeast Asia or South America, but um, we obviously don't want to leave him for, you know, a year or something like that. So we uh, decided to do the van thing and we had kind of dreamed about it for a while. So we bought the van and then we spent a year saving and also like working on converting it and building it out into a camper. And then uh, since, um, so for about six months, we left in the beginning of June, we have been traveling to, we went to, we quit our jobs and we went to Montana, up to Canada for most of the summer, down the West Coast, and then we went back to Denver for Memor or for Labor Day weekend um, because Fish always plays there, so we had to be back. And <laughs> yeah. it was a good time too because we had been gone for like three months, so it gave us like a chance to see our family yeah. and friends and yeah. stuff. And then, um, and then we spent like some time in Crested Butte, some time in Durango, oh, cool. um, some time in the Southwest for the fall, like Utah and Arizona. We did like a rafting trip and a backpacking trip um, to Havasu Falls, which was really beautiful and a trip to Sedona. To, my parents came to visit us there and then um, we headed south and west and now we're doing Baja for the next couple months. Which is really cool because we're both from Colorado, yeah. Denver, yeah. <laughs> and we meet in Baja. Yeah. 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 What are the odds? <laughs> when we saw you pull in, I saw the license plates. Yeah. Oh, cool, Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not exactly in like the middle of 
the tourist path. I mean, yeah. we're I'm kind of in know, a weird limbo area. Yeah, yeah. we're in an off, pretty yeah. far off of Mex one. Um, not that far, but um, far enough that you like wouldn't just drive down and go, oh, there it is. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you have to kind of seek okay. out see a little lingo. Yeah. lingo. I, so I think what intrigued me is when I was asking you, so is this a vacation or are you like, how oh, are yeah. you doing this? Like, uh, yeah. So yeah. you already told me, but now you <laughs> tell it again. <laughs> yeah, now it's our lives. I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, I mean, we had, when we planned for it, we planned to do, you know, a year was what we budgeted for. Um, but we have like found a couple ways to make some money along the way. We worked on a friend's farm for, a month in Durango and um, which is like southwestern Colorado and we um, you know we, people keep asking us when when are you gonna be done when are you gonna stop and we've kind of like you know changed our perspective a little bit where we can go like work again for our friend in April and so we might do that and then maybe spend the summer doing you know some seasonal work in like Crested Butte because that's where a lot of our friends are and we love it there and then we're talking about perhaps you know working for our friend again next fall when he um, does a harvest and then going down to maybe b back to here or a different part of Mexico or, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out ways that we can, like, keep, keep this doing. Keep chasing keep summer. Running. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's a good plan. I mean, we have other friends, too, who um, who do, like, seasonal work and, like, um, some friends, cheers to now. Um, they work he, three he months off, out of the year they work and then travel the rest? But he goes up and fishes in Alaska and, and makes a decent amount of money there. And then they go to... I, Somewhere in North Dakota. If I butcher it. South or North Dakota? North Dakota. North Dakota. And they do um, oh, the beet harvest. Yeah. Beet okay. harvest. And yep. he drives a truck for that. And, and uh, they make a decent amount of money doing seasonal work that they can keep traveling. And It's keep. easier if you can find the seasonal work. It's it's good if you don't have to pay rent because yeah you exactly can still keep moving and right. it's a lot more sustainable than I, I mean i wouldn't be able to survive off seasonal work living in denver <laughs> yeah because like the seasonal work and it depends on the work and your mindset too because like um like um his name's tom and he does fishing and like when he fishes he's out on the boat for like a couple i months. think yeah a couple yeah. months so they get separated for a little while and Mm -hmm. yeah. That's got to be kind of hard, I think. Um, yeah. so you I'd are leave you for two months if I didn't have to work the whole rest of the time we're traveling. I'll leave you for two months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we, we could, could totally do, do I think that. We could do it. I think we have the mindset we could do it. Yeah. I don't think it's for everybody, but, you know, this whole lifestyle isn't for everybody. No, exactly. Right. Obviously. So. Really yeah. Cool. Yeah. So do you mind if I ask, like, what you're going to be doing for harvesting? We, just, we were trimming, <laughs> no, uh, we were trimming weed for our friend yeah. and, um, and uh, hemp also because um, they do industrial hemp also. So. In Colorado. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Where it's legal. Yeah. Where, yeah. yeah. It's legal. And, <laughs> and, and more and more. It's, it's going across <laughs> yeah. a lot of places that we've traveled. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, no big deal anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in the um, spring, they have to plant everything, so there's, like, you know, opportunity there for – some lots work of, and then lots of greenhouse work filling pots with plants yeah and. yeah so you guys were on like the traditional path right and i mean I would say. college and you know yeah. jobs yeah we both had college degrees with very good jobs where we sat at a desk and yeah lived the american dream yeah, <laughs> yeah. so boring yeah <laughs> Scary day. and i like i mean i loved my job like i really did i worked um for a company called open table which is like a restaurant software um and i worked with really great people and i liked all the clients that i worked with and my team was awesome and it was a really fun place mm -hmm. to work we yeah um like worked really hard but played really hard too you know we got to go to like really nice dinners and um drink a lot of wine and it was an awesome place to work um so it's it was weird like leaving because it was I didn't hate my job um yeah. but you know we had been in Denver we both kind of grew up in Denver um and and I think we had lived there then together for oh wow um we had lived there together <laughs> for in the Highlands neighborhood in the same house for like seven years yep. and um, a lot of our friends, you know, they started moving to the suburbs because they bought houses and we just like didn't really want that. Um, and also a lot of my friends who I like worked with were people that were transplants to Denver. Um, and I feel like a lot of them appreciate Denver a lot more than I felt like I was appreciating it because I had grown up there and everything. And so I think we were just like, we were ready for a change and we had these dreams. And so even though there was like lots of reasons not to do it, you know, like I did like my job and it was a really good job and you had a really good job also. Yeah. Um, and we made really good money. It was just like, you know, that, I think that made it even more special that we decided to like kind of just take a step back from that and try something totally different because this was our, our like dream to do. And you saved like for a while because you knew you wanted to do something like this. So didn't you save for yeah. a few yep. years? Yeah, correct. Um, 
So yeah. that's usually my question is, how do you make this work? Yeah. And that's what was ours yeah. too, is how are we yeah. gonna make this work? If yeah. we wanna live like this, how? Yeah, the last year working on the van, I mean, we didn't have any friends unless they were <laughs> at the house helping us work on the van, which a lot of our friends did, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. But that's like, cool. I, we didn't go out on the weekends anymore. It was like, every time it was like, hey, you wanna go get a beer? We just say, no, future fund. That is yeah. for our future <laughs> fund. <Okay. laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was like, all right, one beer here, it's two beers in Mexico. Let's yeah. save that money, and then we, can, yeah. <laughs> but we kind of just had to remind ourselves every day that it's gonna be better when we're, this cool. year is done. And, but it wasn't just that year. It was you know we had planned for the year before. We were planning for this, and so then we had to save money to buy the van, and of course like work on the build and everything. So it was kind of it's been like a multi-year process and mindset and goal to work towards. That's pretty cool commitment and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. That's really cool. Um, speaking of committing, this beer is going to get warm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we should open this it. This is the Indio. So it, it looks like four different beers, but I think we determined it's probably the same beer, right? <laughs> With four different special things. labels. <laughs> it's just the edition, the special edition for yeah. Dia de los Muertos. The Day of the Dead, my birthday. It is. It actually is my birthday on Day of the Dead. Oh, yeah? yeah. It is, yes. So you're a Scorpio also. I am. My birthday is October 26th, so. Oh, ah, okay. Uh, so we're right there. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Gracias. You're welcome. We should put into perspective, it's like 11 o'clock in the morning here, so <laughs> <Yeah>. hey, <laughs> you're making up for all the not drinking. Yeah. <laughs> but that's because we're travelers and we've got things to do, besides drink beer, believe it or not, every no, once in a while. you drink beer in the day, oh. and when it's dark at 4.30, then you go work. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Or go to sleep at 6. Yeah. Cool. All right. Salud. 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 It's a. It's the Budweiser of Mexico. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I think, all the I same? think we discovered the Budweiser the of Mexico. Beer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's like a little yeah, heavier a like than like a Tecate, but it's like not really. Not much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although somebody told me last night that Tecate makes a black label, oh. which is, in his words, it was a much higher alcohol and he said it's like six six and a half percent and he's like it's almost like drinking a wine and i was like wow you don't drink a lot of heavy beer yeah. don't i'm sure it's just like the pbr <laughs> black label it's just like the extra right. strength and it's just like yeah, higher it's just alcohol, alcohol content but it tastes worse than a regular pbr so yeah. <laughs> i have not tried the pbr one because i just pretty much avoid pbr yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. i'm a beer snob so. yeah you kind of are i i i Teeter between geek and snob. <laughs> yeah. I fall on the snob side a lot. Yeah. And you talk all that. He could talk about beer. Oh, yeah. I'll talk about beer all day. Forever so. and ever and ever and ever. So, what's like some of the worst adventures kind of things that you've had that you're like, why the hell are we doing this? <laughs> Have you had anything like that? Nothing that's like broken us down that bad Good. yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, just little things like. One day the water pump broke, and so we oh, don't have any yeah. water, and we're in the middle of nowhere. And I feel like and it was cloudy, and yeah. so our battery was dying. That was like everything that happened at yeah. once because we your solar we are yeah are totally solar powered. Um, but then it uh, pretty solution based, so it was just like all right, we need to find a water pump, and we need to find sun, and that's like we have all the time in the world. These aren't that big of problems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. And the clouds parted. Yeah, <laughs> yep, exactly. yeah, and we just like went to. We were in Canada when that happened. We were in like Revelstoke, which is a little ski town, okay. and we weren't necessarily planning to go to Kelowna, which is like their wine area, and um, like Kelowna is like kind of like where all the um, the wineries in British Columbia come from. And but we were we looked, and it was a decent sized city, and there was an RV supply store that we could get a new pump, and oh, the weather looked better. Yeah. So we just like changed our plans and went there um, and you know sat got, got the water pump fixed and got sun, sun and found some awesome wineries and yeah. some great rock climbing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Happy cool. accident. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. We really kind of go have to go with the flow yep. because yeah. um, people always ask us, "Well, where are you going? Where are you going to be like at this time? Where are you going to be at this time?" And we've like we had a general idea, you know, we were going to British Columbia and then we were going to be in Washington and Oregon and um, you know, we, we had general plans, but they change like every week. So, yeah. yep. you know, like the, de know. the actual details of them change every but week. you don't so. have like every spot mapped no, out. Like, oh, yeah. in five days we're going to be here. And if, even if we did, I feel like it, it wouldn't would like, happen. wouldn't happen. It would <laughs> yeah. end up changing because we something would happen. Like we would need to go somewhere for sun or we would yeah. need to go, you know, it's just so. It, we, we used just, to do that a little bit at the beginning. Like, let's do this, yeah. this, and this. And then it was like, 
No, no, we're not doing any of that anymore. Mm-hmm. Doing yeah, we did too quite a bit. In the beginning, you kind of figure out, you, you plan a couple days ahead at least. But it's funny the different ways people travel because we know a lot of people who are full-time RVers that they, they like to have things a lot of times they'll announce their schedule out for the whole year though like i've had a couple they know where they're going to be staying three three months from now but us we might not know where we're going to be three hours from now yeah (laughs) same here like we knew for we knew we wanted to go to british columbia right and we knew we wanted to come here for the winter and we knew we needed to be in Colorado for fish on Labor Day. And then we had a permit to hike in the Grand Canyon. So it was like, oh, we yeah, have awesome. to have the, those dates. And then fish those dates. Those are the only dates we have. And then it was like summer Canada, winter in Mexico. I don't yeah, cool. Anytime cool. it starts and ends. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. I like that. I yeah. like that kind what of is, travel. But. What does your family think of all this? Um, I mean, my mom thinks, my parents think it's cool. My my mom always gets a little worried. She was especially worried about us going to uh, Mexico. Um, but I was telling you last night, it's so funny because, you know, now we have phones and yeah. like we can talk all the time and, you know, there's so much, and I'm closer. When I was 18, I studied abroad in Argentina. So that was like exactly 10 years ago. And like I moved to South America and I didn't have a phone. I mean, I had an Argentine like little, you know, phone that you put minutes onto, but I couldn't right. call them. The only way we could communicate was like via Skype. So yeah. we had to like set up a time to Skype with each other. And so I wouldn't talk to her for like weeks at a time. So it's really funny because we're, you know, we're able to be really in, in, I mean, we have Verizon, so we have, you know, right. we, 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 our phones work in Mexico yeah, and right. you know, everything. So it's, and it worked in Canada. So it's really where we can communicate with them really frequently. Um, so that's, that's kind of funny, and I think her biggest thing is, uh, you know, they always are like, "Well, what's next? Well, what are you doing next? Well, when are you gonna? When, when is this gonna be over?" When are you and, coming home? <laughs> and I, you know, I just I think that's the hardest part for her is that we we think it's exciting that we have kind of like the unknown, but they like yeah. want us to have like a plan, and yeah. I think it's exhilarating to not have yeah. a plan. Yeah, it's but so <laughs> that's just me and my mom and my family, and I think my mom's really excited for me, just following my dreams, and yeah, some she's a little bless her heart she's not the best with geography she's always like wait where are you oh wait where's that I'm like, oh, okay. it's in mexico <laughs> yeah. but i think well, she's happy um like right when we first left she was like wow i most of the people i met that are older like wow i wish i would have done something like that when i was younger and not waited yeah. but you do now like we're older yeah and we're doing it now yeah yeah, so, yeah mm-hmm. what the hell yeah. and there's we're in an expat basically a community right here too. yeah it's yeah, like here, a big yeah. expat community here yeah and they're like what probably like 70s yeah Some a lot of people in their 80s. Yeah. and they're That's doing what, it now uh, yeah. we've seen a lot of older people out in mexico traveling doing yeah. the same thing as us and they're even more rugged setups with tents yeah. and oh, trucks yeah. And, yeah 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 quite a bit and like some of the people here um our friend skip he's been here for 23 years wow in baja you know, and nice. yeah here, yeah, here at, he owns property at, here and nice right here so um yeah and it's cool it's it's kind of cool and well and hopefully we can You'll be able to show your parents on YouTube. You have video proof that you're okay. <laughs> We're alive. <laughs> Maybe that'll assuage mom's fears a little bit. But hopefully, mom. <laughs> She's <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> What's some of the like very cool moments that make you think like I'm never going back to the regular lifestyle? <laughs> I mean, I think for me, you know, just sometimes waking up and being, you know, not not having. A schedule, not having to set an alarm, but you still wake up. I, I feel like I still wake up pretty early. Um, you know, especially now because of the we go to bed so early. Bed early You're right. getting really in. I'm getting really in tune with like the the sun. The sun, you know, mm-hmm. um, because it's you know in the winter it's dark at 4:30, and then what do you yeah. do unless you unless you're somewhere like this where you can like go and sit inside and yeah. stuff, and you know we're you know we're hanging out in the van and watching a movie or something like that. Um, but um, yeah, it's so I feel like just waking up somewhere, not having an alarm, waking up when you want to, taking your time in the morning, which that's something that I never used to do. Oh, um, nice. I was always like a, I got out of bed, I took a shower, I immediately got on my bike or the bus to go to work. I made breakfast at work, like I immediately, you know, I didn't even have like five minutes to kind of gather yep. myself and start my day. So I love that part. And um, yeah, I mean, I think sometimes I'm just being able to do what we want to you know yeah. just every day we can just say hey like what do you want to do today should we go for a mountain bike ride should we go for a hike should we drive somewhere else um and you know having that flexibility and sometimes that is daunting you know just being able to have unlimited options um True. but i think that's part of the coolest the, one of the coolest parts of the experience for me 
Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. And then there's just those bittersweet moments like coming back from a mountain bike ride and my ride ends at our house that we can just drive wherever or it's in a perfect spot. I'm like, this is, it's just those moments you're like, everything is perfect. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's just, this is awesome. Yeah. It's really nice when your house is and, there. Yeah. And then you don't have to drive an hour or two home. Yep. You're, that, you're home. <laughs> yeah. That was a big That's thing in Denver thing. too. Like skiing just became like a, you know, you can drive up there. Yeah. 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 Like, you I love it yeah. and it's worth it. Really. Yeah. It's, it is, but it's just such a, like it's almost torture to get getting there. there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you have to go, if you work and have to go on the weekends when everybody is going. And you don't have a place to stay up there. So we did for 20 years. The weekend warriors. Yeah. All the time. I mean, and it's only marginally better now, like during the week, you know, yeah, and it's exactly. getting busier and busier, busier all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you mentioned uh, what I'm sure you've heard of called FOMO, fear yeah. of missing out. Yeah. All mm -hmm. those options that you have and it's kind of daunting. Yeah. Do you get that often or you just kind of shut it down? Or ha I get it a lot and I get myself worked <laughs> up and then I get really kind of upset. And then I have to realize that uh, we wouldn't be here in the first place mm -hmm. if we weren't doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's because when you're somewhere, you, there's sometimes lots of things you want to do, but you're not always going to do all of them, and and sometimes you don't like you don't need to do all of them. Like sometimes, I think that's the crazy thing is that even though we don't have you know jobs or anything that we're working all the time, you know sometimes you just need a day to just chill, and you don't have to. And and I think that that especially when we first started, it was hard for. You know, we wanted. We thought we were going to be doing stuff every single day, oh, and you know, so hard. multiple yeah. things every day, and yeah, and and like you just. I think that once we got into like a rhythm, it was you know that we we don't have to do everything. We wouldn't be here you know at all. And sometimes you just kind of like got have to listen to yourself and what you need. And sometimes that's a crazy day where you do a bunch of stuff, and sometimes it's you know just a, a chill day where you're pretty much yeah. doing nothing and like reading your book and hanging out and going for like a walk by a lake or something um and i i think that that has been a learning experience for sure because i anticipated doing so much stuff every single day and we don't really <laughs> yeah. i haven't i've had way more fomo sitting at my desk than i do living this lifestyle because right yeah. now i'm like yeah, i'm doing everything that i want to do Everyone else is missing out on my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's funny because, yeah. and like you were talking about cramming everything in. I think, I uh, looking back at it for us too. I was like, we did that a good bit when we first hit the road, and I think it's. You said you moved really fast. Yeah, too, we moved right? pretty fast. Really fast. Um, see everything. Every two days we would. And I think a lot of that's the, the the mindset of coming out of a, the American work cycle of like you get. You know, in America, usually it's two or three weeks of vacation a year or something like lucky. that. And when you take a vacation, it's usually one week at a time or maybe two weeks if you're lucky, lucky. And then you're cramming everything into that space. Mm -hmm. And you're like, uh, it's almost everybody always talks in America about coming home and needing a vacation from their vacation. Yeah. yeah so it's <laughs> like you need a vacation from your vacation, right? Mm -hmm. and, but then when you're doing this, when it's just your lifestyle, your everyday life where you're living, you're doing things where you're living and yeah, you miss, we like don't go to this place or somebody's like, oh, you should go here, 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 here when you're in this area. And it's yeah. like, well, yeah, that'd be nice, but we don't have unlimited funds. Yep. And We're we don't really have, on vacation. and <laughs> I guess maybe yeah. we could make the time eventually if we wanted, if we wanted to. to, but you know. We're not, we're still experiencing so many things. And yeah. I feel like we meet more people now when we're, oh, when we're so at new places mm -hmm. instead of like on vacation. Now I feel like we take the time to get to know somebody. Like, like here, we met Skip the first day at night we were here. And then he invited us over to his house to have Thanksgiving yeah. dinner with him and watch football, you know? Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow. Because we thought, oh, we don't know what we're going to do for Thanksgiving. We're in Mexico. And yeah. it's like, nobody does Thanksgiving. And like, yeah. Skip does. <laughs> that was like we met some people we were just camped in like a wild camping spot but there was a couple other people camped near us and we met like two guys who were both traveling by themselves and one of them was super super stoked on doing a Thanksgiving dinner so we ended up like cool. going into town buying some stuff for Thanksgiving dinner it rained so we ended up going up to the hostel that was really close to where we were camped and um, used their kitchen and everything and had a big Thanksgiving dinner with you know there was even some mm -hmm. British guys that came in and were going to stay at the hostel and they nice. didn't even know it was Thanksgiving and right. we were like yeah. 10 minutes yeah, away from it? eating <laughs> and and we were like, well, it's American Thanksgiving if you guys want to eat with us, too. So we ended up having this, like, big Thanksgiving awesome. dinner with, like, Mexican people and British guys and a couple of people <laughs> yeah. from the U.S. And, you know, it's it was cool. But I, I also feel like 
you do kind of meet people more when you're yeah when you're yeah. a little bit more yeah. open-minded to it and everything because we don't and feel as rushed to get out to the next place or the mm -hmm. next thing yeah. so it's like hey do you guys want to stay here tonight okay. sure no yeah we've stayed at people's property ranches and houses because we and drank beer from a skull because we were like sure we'll <laughs> we stay did. another night <laughs> in someone's driveway that we just met yeah. like yeah. that's how that ended up in a little town in ohio mm -hmm. like there's these little stories like that that come across that you wouldn't yeah. have even heard before that's yeah. why i love this yeah and we still stay in touch really with cool. all, a lot of these people mm -hmm. you know. yeah. well hopefully yeah. we stay in touch with you and you're in the, the south in <laughs> yes. march so yeah. that'd be amazing really cool. yeah and i think too um like on the note of like not having to do everything i think also as we've been doing this and we've realized like well, we don't have to just do this for a year like we could continue doing this for longer i think that also like takes a lot of the pressure off of you have to get everything in because you're only doing it right, for a year that was the plan, right? yeah. yeah that's yeah. usually yeah. the plan yeah. Yeah. about a year and now you're like yeah. Like you were maybe talking we about earlier, maybe we can do some little seasonal jobs here. You know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that, that's happened to a lot of other people we know too. That yeah, they're like, that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. There's so many different options out there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of different things, and yeah. a lot of people we know doing work camping gigs and camp hosts and things. We talked about that too. We've talked about, that we've we've talked about doing that. Also. I don't know if I want to sit months for like six months. months you do have to be in the same place for a long time. Yeah, like I'm okay for a while. I could do that. Not six months, but usually it's six months. If you could do a couple months stretch or something, yeah. And we're also looking at uh, trying to like set up and take down music festivals, see if mm. we can find work doing that. It's been kind of yeah. It's there been are people doing people, that, but I know people are doing it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you get down to Texas when South by Southwest is yeah, going on. Or They're going to need or, extra yeah. people all the time. Bonnaroo, yeah. uh, Coachella, yeah. and then maybe you get a free like ticket too. Yeah, yeah. There you yeah. Go. And you get a <laughs> maybe not get to watch all the bands you yeah. want to watch, yeah, exactly. but you're like, working in here and I'm yeah. And yeah. hanging out with everybody. Yeah. Exactly. And then when we first started out, we were thinking that we would do this for a while until we're done. Usually our answer is when someone asks us, how long are you doing this? Until we're done. Yeah. I don't know when. <laughs> yeah. 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 But That's a good answer. after that, we were thinking we were going to move overseas and do like extremely slow travel in like Airbnbs or just renting places. But yeah. then it kind of hit us like, it's like, you don't have to wait till you're done RVing or camper right. vanning or whatever. You can do it in the middle of that. Yeah. yeah. You can park back. it yeah. and go over and then come back. Yeah, park back. it or exactly. rent it out. Yeah. There's so many different <laughs> it's ways. It's a way to make money too. Rent yeah. out your yeah, RV people, while you're... People rent out their vans. And RVs. Yeah. A lot of people do that yeah. now. So There's so many options. I had no idea this world was even out here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Awesome. I had no clue. <laughs> it's so cool that you, and you learn it all on, like, you wouldn't be able to research all of it. It's just stuff that you learn, I yeah. feel like, along yeah. along the way too. Yep. It's like homebrewing. Sometimes you just got to rig shit up <laughs> <laughs> and you make it work. Exactly. <laughs> I have one more real. question for you guys, but you oh, kind yes. of already answered it, so I'm going to make it harder. Okay. Uh, <laughs> at the end of every interview, we ask. Huh? A twist? Yeah. Ooh. Shut up. I don't <laughs> even know about this one. <laughs> I'm curious. So we ask everybody, like, um, so we call our business living and stat life, which is like a double meaning, a beer, obviously, and then like a full life. And so we want to ask like you guys what your stat life is, like what your definition of it is. But dude, you're already living it. That's why we're interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to come up with one word each to oh. define your stat life. One word? Yeah. Damn, that's pressure. Yeah. Because they basically just define their entire that's stat true. life. That's true, yeah. They, I, mean, <laughs> gotta, um, I would say psyched. 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 <laughs> never heard that word. <laughs> that word for that I like definition. That. I love it. <laughs> um, I would say... Just freedom, like okay. cool. opportunity and freedom. To choose what what we want to do when and sight and freedom. not be tied down. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. 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 Salud. Salud. No, Salud. Salud. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Awesome. We have new conversations every week. Be sure to subscribe to Living a Stout Life so you don't miss out. FOMO, fear of missing out. What's something you feel like you are missing out on? If you can answer that question, then you have some planning to do. Let us know how you plan on making your daydream a reality. And be sure to tune in next week, where you'll get a tour of Carini the van, equipped for any adventure, especially those adventurous Mexican roads. That's the first time I've ever been interviewed. Yeah. 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 Cool. Except for like you guys a, are great. Except like, for like a job. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs>